Like most British Muslims, Ed Hussein grew up in a hard-working household of immigrants from colonial India. As a child, his parents would bring him to pray here at the moderate Brick Lane Mosque in London's East End. But they could never have predicted the journey he would later take into the heart of radical Islam. Ed, what makes a young teenager from a pious Muslim household become a radical? In my case, I think initially I was duped. It's a slow, gradual process, developing ideas that were confrontational, that were radical, that were extremist. Nobody questioned me other than my parents. Tired of their questions, he ran away from home at 16 and immersed himself in political Islam that was taught here at the East London Mosque. I bought this book here and it's prominently displayed there attached to the mosque. The book Milestones is by Syed Qutb, who advocates using Islam to seize political power. We have realized that attacking the non-believers in their territories is a collective duty. So it's being sold as a religious duty to kill innocent people on the basis of their religion. And Qutb's ideas still form part of weekly lectures at the mosque. So here's an event linked to Said Qutb, Maududi, here at the East London Mosque. Every on a weekly. evening. The author Qutb, for example, of this particular book is the same man who is an inspiration to Bin Laden and um, Ayman al-Zawahiri and others. So th these are the godfathers of Al-Qaeda. Those running this mosque declined to answer Ed's criticism. But back then, Ed was soon searching for something even more radical, like this message of Muslim separatism. We can just about read it, stay Muslim. Stay Muslim, don't vote. It's, it's to prevent Muslims from becoming part and parcel of the, of the system here, but to keep them separate. And this is a message put up by a group called Al-Muhajirun, which is an offshoot of Hizbut Tahrir. Allahu Akbar! And just this week, Al-Muhajirun were protesting the arrest of six members on charges of inciting and financially supporting terrorism. It's the ideology which is to remain separate from mainstream Western political discourse. And that ideology was the next stop on Ed's road to radicalism. You joined Hizbut Tahrir? Yes. Which is what as an organization? They, they like to call themselves a political party. They're, they're, they're a group of individuals who have members right across the world who are dedicated to overthrowing every single Arab government, every single Muslim government, and setting up an expansionist global state in the Middle East. And, and, and in their words, it's a launch pad for a jihad to go out to other countries. So it's, it's, it's basically creating an Islamist empire. And they operate here in England? Absolutely. Openly? Openly, in large numbers, um, on university campuses to this day. Ed says he was a campus recruiter for Hezbollah Tahrir, whose long-term goal is a sort of United States of Islam, a caliphate ruled by fundamentalist Islamic law called Sharia, just as it was a thousand years ago. It was here that I and extremist organizations in the mid-1990s and even now found it easy to recruit because people in these parts of Britain don't have a clear identity as to who they are, whether they're Asian, whether they're Muslims, whether they're British. We claim that India, for example, was Muslim land to be conquered again by the army of a coming caliph. That was the sort of rhetoric we were putting out and nobody questioned us. So we went to question the spokesman for Hezbollah Tahrir, who openly admits they are working towards a caliphate. Today the Muslim world is a very unstable place. Under Islamic rule, under the caliphate, there was stability even in Palestine. Jews, Christians, Muslims lived in harmony under an Islamic political order. What you say sounds, you know, reasonable, but clearly your methods are suspect because you're banned in just about every country that exists, no, except for this one. No, we're not. Not at all. Though let's be clear that it's the tyrants in the Muslim world who are afraid of the revival of the masses. And as for the British government, if Blair seeks to ban us, he's going down the same road as the tyrants in Egypt and in Sudan. We, we are, we've obviously talked to some people who've been in, inside the group and members of the group, Ed Hussein, for instance. Well, Ed Hussein was never a member of his Tahrir. We need to have our facts very clear. So you're denying that? That Ed Hussein was a member of Hezbollah Tahrir, absolutely. And as a recruiter for, for Hezbollah he Tahrir? That's false. I attended cell structure meetings for two years. My direct instructor was Farid Qasim, 
it wasn't anybody ordinary, it was a deputy leader of Hizb al-Tahrir. I radicalized this entire college. In, in two years, there were Muslim women walking around in veils and face covers, Muslim men going around putting up posters. What turned you off this strain of Islam that you were propagating? Um, one afternoon I was studying in the library and I heard young British Muslim students were shouting Allahu Akbar aloud as if they were at war in the Middle East. And then soon afterwards, we classified at the time as a Christian student, was stabbed in his heart and he fell here and he died. Um, that, to my mind, was you know, Britain's first Islamist murder. Ed says he left Islamism there and then, but that it would take another 10 years to fully decontaminate his mind. Why did you write this book? It was written because all around me in Britain I see a form of Islam that's being developed which is highly literal, deeply political and exceptionally confrontational. Are you not afraid? I am afraid, I am afraid, but I feel that my duty to fellow human beings is more important than my duty to Islamists. Christiane Amanpour, CNN, London.